Hi, I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors legal hotline lawyer. And today we're talking about an issue that pertains to every single broker. Managing broker, designated broker, I don't care what your role is in a real estate firm or in a real estate transaction, what we're about to describe pertains to you. The Department of Licensing requires that every transaction file include a copy of all material correspondence. And what the Department of Licensing is finding over and over and over again is that not only have brokers failed to pull out something that the Department of Licensing would consider a material correspondence and include that in the transaction file, but but firms as a whole are failing to retain any correspondence whatsoever in the transaction file. The material correspondence retained in a transaction file will more often than not protect the brokers and the firms from allegations of wrongdoing. Because your correspondence is going to prove that you advised the client to seek the advice of an expert, for example. Your correspondence is going to prove that you reminded the buyer prior to uh, 9 p.m. on the last day of their inspection contingency that if they didn't take action, their inspection contingency was going to be deemed waived. Your correspondence will show that you put the buyer on notice that they needed to make timely loan application. Your correspondence will show that you notified seller or listing broker that the earnest money wasn't deposited timely. The the correspondence between you and your client, between the other broker, between third-party providers like escrow, lenders, inspectors, appraisers, et cetera, et cetera, all of that correspondence is required to be maintained in your transaction file if it is material to the transaction. Please do not get bogged down in the meaning of the word material because of course it is an undefined term that ultimately will only be defined by an administrative law judge if the Department of Licensing uh, prepares a statement of charges against you or your firm that you failed to maintain material correspondence, then it will be an an administrative law judge that determines what's material and what's not material. Don't go down that road. Retain all of your correspondence uh, that has to do with the transaction. Now, if you email your client and ask how little Johnny's birthday party was, and that's the substance of your email, the the sum total of your email, then of course that's not correspondence that's material to the transaction. But if you have to save emails like that in order to be sure that you've got the material correspondence, then save it. Because too much correspondence isn't going to hurt you. But not having material correspondence could sink your ship if there is a claim brought against you that you failed to, let's just say for example, put your buyer on notice that their inspection contingency was about to waive. If you have proof that you put your buyer on notice, the, 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 there's no statement of charges that's ever filed. If you did in fact put your buyer on notice, but you don't have proof of putting your buyer on notice, a statement of charges may likely be filed and you brought, probably will have no successful defense because you won't be able to prove otherwise. So what do we mean by correspondence? Anything that's in writing and a journal record of oral conversations as well. So let's look at this piece by piece. What, what is possibly in writing? Emails, texts. If you're going to communicate with your client by text, you have to have a way of printing those texts and retaining them in your file. Social media. Do you communicate with your client through Facebook messages or through Twitter or any other social media medium? If you do, you've got to find a way to, pre- to print those communications. If you can't, then you don't have proof of the communications. Oral conversations. You talk to your client. You advise them to seek legal counsel. You have a phone call with your seller who lives in another state. You need to journal your file regularly. May 2nd, talk to client about and then write what you talk to them about. May 7th, spoke to the inspector and discussed yada yada. When you journal, then you're going to have 
entries in sequence by date and there and the writing is going to be consistent and courts will accept journal notes like that because it would be very difficult to replicate after the fact courts will accept with your testimony that this was an accurate journal of what you did from a day-to-day -day basis that that is in fact a true statement of what you did so if you have a journal account of your oral conversations recorded in your file that's going to protect you in the long run. And it is in fact material communications and you're required to have it in your file. I know this is something that very, very few brokers uh, do in, in our state, within our, within our industry, within our association even. So I encourage you to change your practices. I know it will be a little bit more cumbersome. I know it's gonna take your time. And in a busy marketplace, that's not something that you want to do is find something else to spend your time on. But this is important and it could be the difference between a lawsuit that you win and a lawsuit that you lose. If you have questions, you want to talk about this or any other topic, please send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.